The 60s had this emergence of the psychedelics linked with a lot of social justice movements, anti-war movement, women's rights, environmental rights. There was a sense, though, that at the time, the core elements of human experience were really not well accepted, so that birth was medicalized, and women were tranquilized, and men were not allowed in the delivery room. Death was something that you didn't talk about. Yoga was something that was nuts. If you did yoga, you were totally weird. These were kind of the basics when psychedelics started coming up and people started describing all of these experiences. Not only was it part of the social justice movement, but the core of the experiences were difficult for our culture to handle. What psychedelics can do, if incorporated into medicine, is have remarkable ability to help people deal with trauma, with uh, relationships, for couples counseling, with uh, confrontation with death, more tolerance, more acceptance of diversity, more search for common ground, ability to work through dialogue rather than through war. Patience is the fastest way. You know, if you push too fast, if you're impatient, you're not going to get where you want to go. You're going to get people nervous. So if you are complacent and too patient, then that's destructive also. Moving at the speed that you can, bringing people along at the speed that they're willing to go, that that's actually the fastest way. You go too fast, there's a counter reaction. And there's also times where there's this sort of tipping phenomenon. So that people can be working for 100 years to try to stop slavery or you know, 100 years to let women vote. And it seems like they're not making much progress. But then they, they reach this tipping point. Enough people have been educated. Then before you know it, within a few years, things flip around. We want to think we're at this tipping point, and we want to think change is right around the corner. So the point is, would we do anything differently? Are we or are we? We still have the same choices. Are we going to try to work in the ways that we think are most effective? I wish and hope that this tipping point is near. I can't really say. I thought that we would have changed global policies a long time ago, that people would have seen the bankruptcy of prohibition, the necessity for altered states and spiritual experiences. But I think that there is openings that I've not seen in a very long time. I think we are living in crucial times. There's no doubt about that. Whatever the mind calendar happens to say or not say is irrelevant. You look around, we're living in crucial times. I think one thing that concerns me is, again, this making something too concrete, that there's going to be this transformation of consciousness, this you know, fundamental split between where we've been before and this, you know, new consciousness in 2012 is marking this division line. I used to joke with Terence McKenna that if he really believed that 2012 was going to be the end of things, that he should take out all these long-term balloon mortgages that he has to pay in 2013. At the end of the day, it's like, what are we going to do today? And is there going to be a change if it ends into 2012 or not? Would I do anything different now? We have the tools that we need to make this a better world. We have to find ways to use them. And that there are people in all generations that want to help. So the solutions are there. It's not too late. And the tools that can promote radical transformation, that can promote uh, less dependence on fossil fuels, all these different ways, the tools are there. And the necessity is for people to be willing to take a risk of optimism, to be willing to try, to be willing to hope, and that if you give up without that, you've lost. If you try, you've won, even if you don't succeed. And I think that's the other big message. It's the effort that really matters. Maybe we won't be able to save the planet. Maybe the global warming will happen and everything will change and it'll be bad for us and species will die. Maybe we won't. But that doesn't really matter. The joy is in the struggle. The joy is in the trying to make it happen. So well, you don't have to believe that it will work. I think that's the first thing is it doesn't, you don't, you just have to believe there's a chance.
recognize potential. Crisis creates opportunity. Are you waiting to be safe or will you make yourself free? Crisis breeds opportunity. Are you waiting to be safe or will you make yourself free?